Hello everyone, my name is Diana Kravimska and I'm a part of Otwa Engineering team at Red Hat. In this short video, we will go through how we can configure TLS on Otwa using Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is an automated certificate authority that issues free certificates without human interaction. Thanks to this, you don't have to worry about creating your certificate signing request, submitting it to the certificate authority, proving ownership of your domain name, and so on. I will switch to my command line. One important thing to note is that in order to be able to obtain certificate from Let's Encrypt, the Wattwise server instance needs to be pub publicly accessible using the domain name that you are going to be requesting a certificate for. So as an example, if I would be requesting a certificate uh, for the domain name example.com, then my Wattwise server instance would need to be accessible using that example.com URL. The reason for this is that in order to validate that, that you really do own the domain name that you are requesting a certificate for, Let's Encrypt is going to try accessing that URL and Wattwise is going to handle proving that you really do own that domain name. So I'm quick connected to the Wattwise CLI here. To host this demo, I'm using OpenShift, but you would normally use, for example, a virtual machine. I'm going to be using an interactive security command, which handles all of the Aritran subsystem configuration for you. So you don't need to be familiar with Aritran subsystem in order to configure TLS for your applications. So this is the command that I'm going to be using. It is security enable SSL HTTP server. I want to use an interactive mode. I want to obtain certificate from Let's Encrypt, and I want to override a default SSL context that is configured on Hotwire. So as you can see, um, the interactive mode is going to guide me through pro providing all of the information that, uh, that it needs in order to be able to automatically obtain the certificate from Let's Encrypt and also configure one way TLS using that obtained certificate. As a first thing, it is uh, prompting me for the information needed to configure a Let's Encrypt account. A Let's Encrypt account is needed in order to obtain and manage your certificates. Here I can either specify the Let's Encrypt account key store file name, or I can let it generate one for me. I will uh, let it generate. Now it also asks me to provide a password, but I can again let it generate a password for me. Now it is asking me for a name that we want to use for the Certificate Authority account resource. I'm going to let it use the default name. You can optionally provide a contact email addresses that Let's Encrypt can use to notify you if there are any issues with your account. I'm not going to configure any this time, but feel free to provide your email in this step. Now it is asking me for the key password for the Let's Encrypt account key. I'm going to let it use the default, and it will default uh, to the keystore password. Uh, now it is asking me for the alias for my Let's Encrypt account key. I'm going to let it generate uh, alias for me. Now it is asking me for the certificate authority URL that I want to use. The default value is Let's Encrypt's production URL. But if you are in a testing environment, you might want to use uh, Let's Encrypt staging URL instead, so you would specify it here. You can also specify a different certificate authority that uses ACME protocol. I'm just going to continue with the Let's Encrypt production URL. Now it is asking me if I agree to the Let's Encrypt terms of service. Um, it also has a link if I want to see uh, what those terms exactly are. I'm going to accept. Now that it has asked me uh, for all the information it needs for my Let's Encrypt account, uh, it is going to ask me for information about our server's key store. It first asks uh, for the key store file name I want to use uh, for my server's key store. I'm just going to uh, use the default. I'm again going to use a generated password. Now it's asking me uh, for the domain name that I want to be uh, obtaining a certificate for. I'm just going to copy my domain name. Uh, 
Um, now it is asking me for the alias that I want to use for my server certificate. Again, I'm just going to let it generate some alias for me. Now it asks if I want to enable FSL mutual authentication. If I said yes here, it will then prompt me for the information that is needed to configure the Trust Manager as well. In this case, uh, I'm just interested in one-way SSL, so I'm just going to go with the default, which is not for mutual SSL. Now that it has finished asking me all these questions, um, it just added a summary for, for me. At the top, uh, I have a summary for the Let's Encrypt account configuration, and it also includes all the values that have been randomly generated. At the bottom, I have a summary of the server key store information along with the domain name that I have specified. Then at the bottom, it, is, uh, it just lets me know that the certificate is going to be obtained from Let's Encrypt and it is going to be valid for 90 days. And it also lets me know that the, server, the key store file will be available in the server's configuration directory. So I'm going to confirm this. And let's see if it succeeds. So I can see that it succeeded. So what has just happened is that uh, this command has automatically created a Let's Encrypt account for me, if it did not exist before. It obtained a certificate from Let's Encrypt using uh, the domain name that I have specified, and it had configured the one-way SSL using this obtained certificate. So now, um, if, if I access my domain in the browser, you can see that it no longer uses a self-signed certificate um, when using HTTPS. And when you look at the information uh, of your certificate, you can see that the certificate was issued by Let's Encrypt, and you can also check uh, the validity information. You can avoid um, having your certificate expiring by automating the certificate renewal process. You can use some of the commands Electron provides for this. So you can use a script that is similar to this one. It uses a um, command should renew certificate, uh, which returns true if the certificate is going to be expired in less than 30 days. And if this uh, command returns true, it will then proceed um, to obtain new certificate from Let's Encrypt, and it will uh, start, uh, store this new certificate under the same alias. The last thing the script does is that it uh, initializes a key manager uh, so that your certificate change will take effect and uh, you, don't have to, uh, you don't have to reload your server. So you could use a script similar to this and, for example, run it every day and you won't have to worry about your certificate expiring. This video showed how you can configure HTTPS using Let's Encrypt. There is a link to Farah Juma's blog post in the description. It contains everything we did in this video and more, so check it out. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, just post them down below. And for those new to Wi-Fi channel, we share videos with interesting topics related to the Wi-Fi project, so please subscribe. Thank you and see you next time.